evening. Welcome to the Wednesday, December 18th Town Council meeting. Um, can I have a call to order? Councilor Donovan? Present. Councilor Caterina? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Blaze? Here. Councilor Benedict? Here. Vice Chair Holbrook? Here. And would you please all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> and at this time, we're going to go into the general public comments. So if you have anything you would like to say, please come up to the podium, and you have three minutes. Name and address, please. Good evening. Uh, Katie Foley, 3 Lucky Lane, Scarborough. Um, I actually think I have a little surprise twist here for you, as I'm not going to talk about ad hoc committees or anything like that. Um, I just really wanted to say thank you to uh, Councillors Katarina and St. Clair for pointing us in the direction of the backpack program. Um, even through the blizzard, the supporters of the DOGS organization were able to rally together and delivered a huge uh, SUV full of food to Wentworth School the other day, and we would not have known about that. Um, had they not put their plea out to us last, at the last meeting. So um, I think for me, uh, it, it's always been a, a goal uh, of this, I, I don't know whether to call us an organization or not at this point yet, we're still trying to organize. Uh, however, I think being engaged in our community is really important and it, we are about much more than just helping dogs, although that is our primary mission and vision. So um, that's all for now, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, good evening. My name is Robert Rovner. I live at 4 King Street in Pine Point. There's a very old saying that goes something like this. You can fool some of the people all the time, and you can fool all the people some of the time. You just can't fool all the people all the time. I would hope that the will and the voice of the Scarborough people that spoke on December 3rd will not go unheeded. And that this Scarborough Town Council will not allow that voice to be abandoned. And thus assume the moral responsibility and legal obligation that they have been entrusted with by their constituency. Thank you for your time. Elaine Richer, 5 Brief Lane, 28 East Grand Ave. Uh, I'd like to address, first of all, the new councillors. One reason for your successful election is because the council was not listening to us before. We're hoping that the two new councillors will. We have a representative government so that our elected officials can represent us in open and honest way and not through backdoor deals. Now the problem I have is that I'm going to make some comments, but I have no idea what you're going to be doing because my comments are made before you tell us about the ad hoc committee. So I could be completely wrong. But we think, I think, that the ad hoc committee that you're about to, uh, to appoint was not an open process. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there was anybody who could apply for the committee. Uh, if it was, I didn't hear about it, and I'm not sure I heard too many people know that they could apply for the committee. If that's true, which I believe it is, then your process, which the voters overwhelmingly said they will not accept, is continuing. If it's not true, then I urge you, the councillors, to describe how committee members were selected and why an open application process was not used. I also want to know why we're doing it this in a couple of weeks. We have more time than that. And I think we also need to be able to find out exactly why we're doing this. And by that I mean, what happened? And I know that a piping plover died, was killed. But what, what really happened? And the reason I'm asking that is because the town may not have been guilty of anything. If that dog was within a 500 foot, 500 feet of a nesting, then it's not the town's fault that this person disregarded the law. 
And so I think that part of the work of this committee, I'm hoping part of the work of this committee, is to look at the entire incident because how can you come up with plans to make this better unless you know what caused it in the first place? So I have great hopes for this ad hoc committee. I'm just hoping that that's what we're going to hear tonight. Thank you. Hi, my name is Amy Dorenzo. I'm at Three Lucky Lane in Scarborough. A few months ago, I got up and spoke about how disgusted I was by our nation's politicians being unable to work together and that I believed that we were capable of much more. When I uttered this statement about my belief in our ability to self-govern, I actually believed it. Over the past couple months, however, as I've seen the way in which this, this issue around the dog's animal control ordinance has spiraled, I'm starting to think that perhaps instead of being better than Washington, we might actually be worse. As disgusted as I get with all their political bickering, when something goes to the voters on a federal level, it is a pretty safe bet that our elected officials will respect the will of the voters and the vote will stand. The fact that the council is now seeking to reject the will of the 73% of the voters, it, to me, is beyond bad politics. The council chair stated very publicly prior to the town vote that if the people voted to overturn the council's decision, that he would leave it alone and allow the original ordinance to stand. And yet the day after the vote, the same individual was pushing to immediately begin action to draft another new ordinance that would go against the people's vote. This to me feels disrespectful and dishonest on so many levels. Regardless of the fact that every one of the nearly 4,000 people who voted may have had a different reason for casting their vote, the bottom line is that 73% voted to overturn the council's decision and return to our previous ordinance. Yes, some may not have cared about beach access, they may not even own a dog or care about being able to take a walk at 6 a.m. in the summer. But the one thing that the no voters all had in common was the message that they wanted to restore the old, old ordinance. I've always been an advocate of working together to find common ground and compromise, and every step of the way I've felt that certain members of the council have been unwilling to consider any solution other than targeting dog owners. One councilor spoke on the nightly news months ago and stated clearly that this isn't about the plovers and that it has been the council's intention to push through this agenda before the plover incident. And yet now that the people have spoken, we are again trying to manipulate public opinion by insinuating that this is the only way to protect the plovers. I believe that there are members on this council who care very deeply about this town and have a great deal of respect for its voters. But I also feel there are some members of this council who are essentially thumbing their nose in the air and saying they don't care what the people think. I ask you all to consider the voters of Scarborough before you rush through any further decisions with regard to this issue. We have asked the council to slow down the process and have been told no. We've asked the council to postpone formation of the ad hoc committee until after the holidays and we're told no. We ask that the committee consist of representation from a variety of individuals with different viewpoints and instead I'm hearing rumors that the council has handpicked four individuals who have been quite vocal in their desire to ban off-leash dogs to represent the 27% who lost the election and gave just three spots to those who represent the 73%. I personally feel this is a mockery of our political system and ask that you can reconsider the actions that are in progress to push through this agenda to overturn the people's vote. Good evening. My name is Judy Sherrick. I live on Avenue 3 in Pine Point. I am a resident non-dog owner and I have always enjoyed watching dogs playing, swimming, and just enjoying life on beautiful Pine Point Beach, along with their owners. I have owned six dogs myself through the years. My hope is to better protect the plovers without eliminating the tiny amount of off-leash time allowed under the current ordinance. It is sad to think this pleasure and privilege might be taken away. This is a complex emotional issue with multiple views and much data that needs to be reviewed and considered. One issue on, in Pine, on Pine Point Beach is the throngs of daily beachgoers who park on Pine Point Road and walk to the beach through Snowberry Park, the new public way built by the town <clears throat> several years ago. I've always lived in Pine Point and parking was never allowed on Pine Point Road until several years ago, after St. Jude's Church was converted to the landing. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but it was never allowed before. 
I've counted as many 60 cars a day parked on both sides of the street. There have been accidents there. I witnessed one myself. It is very dangerous. It is very dangerous walking across the rotary through the heavy summer traffic to get to the beach. Once people are there for the day, there are no bathroom facilities available. I've had, owner, I've had homeowners in this area witness individuals creating their own bathrooms in the dune grass. Um, please take the time and take everything into consideration. Higgins, Ferry, and Pine Point Beach are not a one-size-fits-all <clears throat> and have different issues and should be considered separately. I'm here on behalf of all the other dogs and dog owners. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry. Anybody else? So Seth Fernal, the 45 Maple Avenue. Um, I don't have anything really planned to say. Just again, trying to ask exactly we can identify the problem first. Uh, we've heard about the beachgoers, we've heard about the plovers, we've heard about the fines. Uh, if we can identify what actually is bringing this to fruition, and then you know this whole situation, the the new ordinance, and, it, and it address that. Uh, we've heard in the past that we want to protect the plovers, but then that conversation leads into then people on the beach in September and such. Uh, we've rec recognized from this vote that the town is, is not for the ban. So if it's really about the plover or the fine, I'd just love to kind of hear, find out why that you know what we're looking at, so we can get a plan going forward. Thank you. Carolina Honan, 25 Broad Turn Road. I will begin by apologizing. I'm not well suited for public speaking. I am not comfortable with one-sided conversations. I seek feedback from the other party and look for opportunities to learn from their perspective. A dialogue requires equal parts listening as well as speaking. When I learned of this council's actions to change the lease law in such an overreacting and plainly unfair manner, I heard one member defend it as representative of the silent majority. Having lived here for over three years, I simply couldn't believe that to be true. I listened and saw opportunities to have my opinion corrected. I was part of a group effort of over 1,500 calls to voters and I listened. When what I heard mostly, this town council acted too quickly and without consideration. My opinion has not changed because I have listened. I urge this town council to review the special election results, take advantage of this opportunity that the citizens of Scarborough have provided you. Don't rush to a result. Take time to work on a solution that is representative of the very obvious majority. Anybody else? All right, so we're going to close um, the general public comments. Um, so we have a motion for the minutes from the December 4th meeting. So moved. Second. Any submissions, errors, corrections? All those in favor? And uh, there are no adjustments to the agenda. Um, and the items to be signed, I will do so shortly. Uh, okay. Order number 13-97 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the following applicants who have applied for renewal of their manufactured housing communities license. Crystal Springs Manufactured Housing Community on U.S. Route 22, owned by Donna Alexander. Pinecrest Manufactured Housing Community located on U.S. Route 1, owned by Teresa DeFossis. And Hillcrest Manufactured Housing of U.S. Route 1, also owned by Teresa DeFossis. So this is a public hearing. Does anybody wish to speak? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. <coughs> have, and there's no action. Yes. Oh, there is action. Okay, sorry. My mistake. Pleasure of the council. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? I think Tom has a... Well, the motion that you've pet, you've uh, is on the floor actually uh, postpones the public hearing and the... Uh, action to consider the license right. for Crystal Springs until January 15th. 
and it, it goes on to uh, approve the other two before you this evening. Mm -hmm. So do we need to split those? No, nope. we've prepared the motion in that, to that effect. I just want to make sure that, that all counselors are clear on that in that regard. Yeah. There's a, one or two outstanding issues that we need to sort through before we're comfortable having you consider um, renewing the license. So order number 13-97 is move approval on the renewal request from Pinterest uh, Pinecrest Manufacturing on the mind. Great Christmas ideas, by the way. Um, located at 126 U.S. Route 1 and from Hillcrest Manufactured Housing, located at 126 U.S. Run, and to postpone the approval and continue the hearing on Crystal Springs Manufactured Housing Community to the co Town Council meeting scheduled for Wednesday, January 15, 2014. So that being said, we'll be postponing um, <coughs> until January 15th. And um, would you like to keep your first and second? Yes. Yes, please. Thank you. All right. And all those in favor? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Order number 1398 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the new request for a combined massage establishment massage therapist license from Pauline Schmidt doing business as the Elemental Body, located at 183 U.S. Route 1, Suite E. Right, and this is a public hearing. Does anybody wish to speak on this? Seeing none, it is the pleasure of the council. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, I guess I just have a quick comment, which is always as um, as we have a new business, is welcome to Scarborough, and hopefully you have a nice long business life here. Um, all those in favor? All right. Resolution 1307 is to act on resolution 1307 to establish the ad hoc animal control advisory committee. And at this time, we'll be taking some public comment on this. Um, so if you wish to speak, please do come up to the podium. Say your name, address, and you have three minutes. My name is Pamela Robner. I live at 14 Street in Pine Point. To the distinguished council, <coughs> it's not hard to understand the word no. It's an N and an O. We learned it probably as one of the first things as a child, no. The recent referendum resoundingly rejected this council's response to a threat of a fine from the Inland Fisheries and Wildlife Services hiding behind the Army Corps. No matter what the reasons were, we said no, and we meant it. We are asking you to respect no. Whether you believe it or not, I voted no because I don't want to lose my early morning walks. I treasure the 12% off-leash time during the summer, and there is zero data to require leashes. We voted no as a group to designated areas, or what council really calls them, dog parks. We don't want them. And we voted no. 73% of the people voted no. Do your job as a council. Enforce the laws you already have. Dogs are not allowed off lead after 5 p.m. and are not al allowed on the beaches all summer long, all day. When you disregard the people's voice, you no longer represent them. What is going on? If it is your intent to vote by April 1st, to leash the dogs during the summer mornings, as many of you have told people privately and publicly, then just do it. Do it now. Vote on it now. Don't waste people's time putting together an ad hoc committee that doesn't really mean anything. Just do it. Don't let the committee do the dirty work. Go ahead and do it. 
Thank you. Hi, Suzanne Foley Ferguson, uh, 331 Black Point Road. I'm usually not nervous speaking. I don't know why. My heart's palpitating. <clears throat> In this particular case, I want to speak to the ad hoc committee. Um, my sister um, and I look at things a little bit differently. <clears throat> it's both a beautiful thing and a pain. She's got the beauty and I'm the pain. <laughs> um, I'm trying to... I'm trying to be hopeful <laughs> about this ad hoc committee, um, but this is the holiday season, and we have asked you guys to slow down. There's two holidays coming up, and if this committee is supposed to have work done, you're leaving two weeks for, for an ad hoc committee to look at things that we've been working, looking at for, for about six months, and we're still finding out new things, and that's just not sufficient time. Here's what I heard, and this is the part that really makes me fearful. What I heard from the town council at their workshop and in private conversations that I've had with a number, at least four people. I don't care that the 4,000 people came out to vote at the special election and that almost 3,000 of them voted to overturn a decision because you know why? We've got to do something. I heard that. I don't care that an unprecedented number of 73% of the voters were unhappy with our decision for a lack of transparency or the process or what took place before the petition drive because we're going to use the same quick, opaque, and already predetermined process to make a decision. And we're going to give them two weeks, a committee. We're going to we're assign a committee and we're going to black people, blackball people if, um, if we don't want them on the committee. And there's more. I don't care if a citizen group spent as much money as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service fine on their petition drive. I don't care because you know what? We're not going to let them raise the money for the fine or pay the fine as they offered, but we will take the money from the Prout's Neck Association. Thank you very much. This is again what I heard from counselors. I don't care that there are three holidays from between now and the 21st. We have a deadline. It's April 1st because we've got to leash those dogs before the summertime. These are things I heard, but it's not just me. The people heard it. I don't care what the vote was. We have to get back to that U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service ordinance because, you know, the vote wasn't about that. The public, public doesn't want the town to do their enforcement or education. The vote wasn't about what's fair and balanced leash law, even though our sign said restore a balanced leash law, restore the one that we already had, but that's not what the vote was. It couldn't have possibly been because they want off-leash time in the summer. That couldn't be the reason. It was all about process. It could not, that vote was not about the federal government running our beaches. Nope, nope, it wasn't. It was year-round and town-wide. That's what it was about. And you know what? This is the other thing I heard. If the message included, I'm almost done, the message included those items, well, you know what? I don't care because I have to represent the minority, too. They have to be re represented, too, you know. Those, these are things I heard, and so did the rest of the public. Well, one sentence. Well, if you compel the committee to a predetermined endpoint of leashing dogs in the early morning, which appears to be what at least four of the counselors have said personally or in the meeting, it's predetermined. I say vote, like you said. Without evaluating other threats and actions for the plover, then you are being disingenuous about protecting the plovers. And if you force the committee to get the work done in two weeks, you are repeating a process that we said no to. You are not representing us. Hello again. Robert Rovner, 4 King Street, Pine Point. For months, I've come to these meetings I've been gaveled and told to sit down. I uh, understand how emotional I can get. And I understand how emotional all of you can get, because I've heard from you. But that's not what I'm here to discuss tonight about this. And I wasn't going to discuss anything. But what really, there are three things that really get under my skin about this whole thing. One is, on, aside from Mr. Donovan and Ms. Katarina, who were not here at the time, all the rest of us were here when Wildlife stood up here and said, 
We cannot force the council to do anything. Now, if they can't force you to do anything, why are we being forced to do something? I don't get it. I can understand negotiation. I can understand sitting down and listening to them. I can sit, understand sitting down as an ad hoc committee with members from the three different beaches, like Judy said, because they're all different. They all have different needs. And listening to Audubon, who has their own agenda, and listening to wildlife. And then we, as a committee, sit down and discuss it and negotiate what is best for every member of this community. Not just the 73%, but the 26% as well. They're entitled to have their voice heard, but they are not entitled to run over the 73%. Anywhere else in this country, 73% is called a landslide. In this town, it's called, we don't care. Secondly, canines. All I hear about from Audubon, from wildlife, is that canines are running through the plover nests. They're not, they're not using the word canines. They're using dogs. Dogs are running through the plover nests. Well, you know what? We don't know that. We know they're canines. We can tell by the tracks. What are canines? They're wolves. They're coyotes. They're fox and they're dogs. There are four groups that can be, that can be predators on this that can be called canines. I'm sick of hearing that it's the dogs. Every dog owner in this place wants that beach and they want to protect the clover. They're not your enemy. They're your partner. Please respect that and include them in a negotiation, not in, the, in a determination that's preordained. Thank you. Katie Foley, Three Lucky Lane. Um, I wasn't going to say anything further, but I, I feel like I, I do want to just, I have been vocal uh, about feeling rushed again, and uh, I was very clear that I felt like the council workshop on December 4th was too soon, and my reason was that emotions are still very raw, and I think, as you can see, they are very raw. Um, it is the holidays. I still uh, have, I won't say I went as far as to beg, but I have plead. Uh, why can't we take this up first thing in the new year? Um, and if the, the only thing that comes to me is that your intent is to act um, regardless, to, to make huge changes regardless of what kind of creative solutions we may bring to the table. Um, and if that is the intent, then I'm sad. And uh, I will give you 150% of myself. Um, that is my commitment. If I am chosen for the ad hoc committee, um, I don't ever do anything halfway. I think you can see that in just the efforts we've put into this entire piece. Um, but I am guarded uh, by what the process has been so far. I still don't feel heard. Um, and I would still like you to slow down. Collaborative work is really great work. It's sustaining work. But anyone who's done any kind of truly collaborative work knows it takes time. It'll take one full meeting just for us to get to know each other uh, and establish rapport. Uh, I don't see how we can ha you know, have something done to you by the 21st of January. Um, that at least three to four meetings is needed. Um, I'm canceling my trip, by the way, to Michigan for this work. Uh, I know that it's my choice, and I do it happily. Uh, I do it because I want to stay hopeful in our process. I want to stay hopeful that we can do better, unlike Amy said, than the U.S. government. Um, I'm kind of the hope, always optimistic one in my family. Uh, the last thing I just want to quickly reflect on is the council workshop. I know that while uh, you all said it was a great opportunity for you to have that discourse and dialogue, um, it is still very difficult. That's not us watching you have a conversation is, is, not, is difficult. Uh, I think we've started some great conversations. Um, I'd like to see more of that. Uh, I, the one thing that disappointed me in that dialogue was that not all the options were laid out. Your viewpoints were laid out and you articulated your personal views very well. Um, but there are other options that were never even discussed 
that it be, maybe just because it's not your viewpoint, but I think the public deserves to hear what those other options are, um, whether you intend to vote on those or not, or go that way or not. So I would ask you to consider when you do a workshop like that, kind of lay it out in a way that the public can see all of the options available. So thank you. All right. Good evening. <clears throat> my name is Sean Flaherty. I reside on Black Point Road. I've been a citizen of Scarborough my entire life. Um, one of the things that I heard coming out of two weeks ago was that uh, everyone felt better after that meeting. And uh, I, I think there was progress made, but this is not enough progress, I think, that passes the straight face test. One of the things that I mentioned, I think a lot of us mentioned, we're hinting at, and we may, maybe we need to be more blunt about this, this cannot get solved in one meeting or two meetings or one month or two months. This needs public input. This needs vetting sessions, not here in the council chambers. Working times, maybe meet at the beach, talk about what has happened over the years, how we already have no trespassing signs stacked along the shoreline on Higgins Beach just next to the shipwreck. No trespassing. It includes dogs. It includes kites. It includes bonfires. It includes fireworks, which are now legal in town. There's all types of things that we do on the beach that much more endanger piping plovers than dogs, and especially dogs in this community that I've seen that I know. As I've said, I'm sure all of you have done your due diligence, spent time at the beach during these prime hours. I'm sure you've seen how few other people are often on the beach besides dog owners. I'm sure you've seen that the birds are hardly even, mostly seagulls, are even bothered by a dog playing fetch. These are things that we need to talk about that aren't going to be talked about in a three-minute stump speech standing here one after another. This is going to take more work. Just on its face, this, this advisory committee, uh, it doesn't seem to be quite on its face um, what the issue really is. It says its first priority is the Piper Plover Protection. That's part of this. It's the Ad Hoc Animal Control Advisory Committee. It's not just plovers. It's not shouldn't be the first priority. It is a priority because of the deadline. I understand that. But we do not know what the repercussions will be exactly if we do not act before April 1st. Has anyone tried calling maybe our representatives in Washington and see how they feel about this? Has anyone talked to Paul LePage and his administration to see if they really want to keep forcing this from a state level? There's a lot of work to be done. It's more about public input. It's got to be slowed down. You can't have a January 21st deadline a month away through the holidays. My goodness, I, I was shocked because this didn't look like compromise to me. This looked like a little bit more the same, and that's how we got here. You know, I've been doing a little bit of reading on public access, especially has to do with beaches. I want to leave you with this. Uh, it's from Bell versus Town of Wells, and I know it has to do more with public access and uh, right of way versus private ownership. But just like many other court cases, they extend beyond ramifications. And Softly, who is now the Chief Justice in the concurrence in this, Eaton versus Wells, said, quote, I would overrule Bell versus Town of Wells. A citizen of the state may walk along the beach carrying a fishing rod or a gun, but may not walk along that same beach empty-handed or carrying a surfboard. I think she could also add bringing and running with a dog. Because one of the things I noticed in the original ordinance is that there was all these exceptions for hunting. Guess what? I've got a golden retriever and a beagle. I'm just going to start going hunting. I'll take my shotgun with me. I have one. I don't like to use it. It's for home protection. But if that's what it means to allow my dogs to go off leash, if that's going to come to that, it shouldn't have to. So let's work together. Let's slow this down. On this agenda tonight, you postponed the very first item. The second one was pushed through. This is the third. Why can't this also be postponed? Let's talk about this. Let's start it. Let's do this right this time. Thank you very much. Anybody else? All right. Seeing none. 
So in the form of a motion, I will read the resolution. Um, so we have, be it resolved by the town council of the town of Scarborough, Maine, in the town council assembled that whereas prompted by an enforcement action initiated initiated by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Town Council enacted certain amendments to the Animal Control Ordinance that provided protections to endangered species, and in particular, piping plovers. So limiting access of dogs on beach to which the public has access, beaches in the town property. And whereas the Town Council action was the subject of a citizen's initiative petition and sought to and did overturn the action of the Town Council by a vote on December 3rd, 2013. And whereas following the citizens' vote, the Town Council wishes to further consider strategies to create reasonable and appropriate regulations, animal control and otherwise, that will assure protection of the piping plover as well as the safety and enjoyment of residents on beaches and town property. And whereas in an effort to identify strategies, the Town Council wishes to draw upon the resources of the community to identify a balanced approach which will achieve the desired goals. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Scarborough Town Council and the Town Council assembled that there is hereby an ad hoc animal control advisory committee created and the membership terms, offices, and duties shall be as follows. One, the purpose. The purpose of the committee is to advise the town manager and town council on strategies to promote reasonable and appropriate protections for piping plovers and all necessary regulations relating to the control of dogs on beaches and town property. The following is a general overview of the discussion points the committee may consider in arriving at its recommendations. Piping plover protection. As its first priority, the committee is to research, analyze, and understand the challenges facing the piping plover on Scarborough beaches and to propose strategies that will afford protections that are as effective as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Guidelines for Managing Recreational Activities in Piping Plover Breeding Habitat on the U.S. Atlantic Coast such strategies may include recommended changes to town ordinances, policies, and or practices. Dog access and control regulations. Inventory all public property where public access is permitted to identify areas appropriate for dog access. Such analysis and recommendations may include designated areas, time or date restrictions, and lease restrictions, and whether a need exists for dedicated spaces. Such analysis should weigh the public's right of access the safety and enjoyment of residents, and the protection of the threatened and endangered species. Enforcement and education. All strategies should consider the level and type of enforcement and education required for proper execution. Recommendations should consider formal activities of town personnel as well as volunteer opportunities and the practical limitations of implementing each recommendation. Research and data. To the extent necessary and appropriate to conduct the committee's analysis, review all relevant data and consult with outside resources. Whenever possible, recommendations shall be based on the same. Where lack of data exists, develop strategies and recommendations to improve data collection in the future. Best practices. Research and review ordinances, policies, and practices used elsewhere and identify best practices that should inform recommendations. The committee's powers and duties shall not exceed those prescribed herein or otherwise restricted by town council rules, policy, and charter. Membership. The membership intends to provide fair representation of key stakeholders, geographic diversity, and unique expertise. The committee shall be limited to Scarborough residents and compromised and comprised of seven members as follows. And at this point, I'm going to interrupt the reading to... Um, go to the town manager. We have seven representatives um, for nomination, and he's going to go over each candidate in a brief summary of what their background brings to the committee. Yeah, I, in preparing for this, and, and I should just preface this, for those of you that uh, witnessed the workshop two weeks ago, I was tasked with preparing this, this resolution, and included as part of that is to come up with proposed membership uh, for the committee. And in that regard, I think rather than uh, going through each one and talking about their personal um, expertise or interest in the matter, I do have some general comments that talk about at least my, my thought process in assembling this list. Um, I'll start by just naming them and I'll come back and, and say some general comments. We have Katie Foley, Noah Perlou, uh, Glenna Chabot, Margaret Hodgkins, Margot Hodgkins, Lucy LeCase, Daniel Ravin, and Bill Donovan. 
Now, generally, uh, this is not an easy task, and I somewhat regretted my offer of doing this uh, for the council, but um, the council seemed very committed, at least what I heard at the workshop, of getting this process started. And I think part of that was to uh, bring this matter to council and for its consideration as soon as possible, and, and here we are tonight. I really worked um, uh, carefully and tried to be thoughtful in the proposed selections. Um, essentially, we have three folks that uh, were uh, fairly actively involved in the effort to overturn the action. Uh, frankly, I have no idea how fo folks voted. Um, I didn't do interviews. I didn't ask how they voted. Uh, but I do know that at least three of these names were active participants in that process. Um, three other folks uh, have been involved in one degree or another in plover protection or research or education. Uh, the vast majority of these seven are dog owners. I think five of seven are. Um, and so the, the real key here is to find folks that are willing to roll up their sleeves to do some hard work in a short amount of time. And that certainly was part of my consideration as well, folks that were willing and able to commit that time. Uh, I can tell you most people weren't happy about um, it over the holidays and kind of the compression of time, but they were all willing to uh, feel very, uh, very interested in the issue and were willing to put the time in. So my goal through all of this was to come up with folks that, uh, again, are willing and able to put time in and have proven themselves either in this process already or in past processes to be open-minded um, uh, and people that are willing to do good work uh, to better the town. And so I, uh, with, with some degree, great degree of comfort, I recommend these folks. And I think I'm very hopeful that we'll have a productive process. And I don't view this as a, sh as a charade whatsoever. Um, I, I hope the council does consider this whole process and these folks I've put before you so we can get started, frankly. So I'll finish continue reading the resolution. Um, although official membership is limited to seven members, the committee is encouraged to draw upon other resources and invite other key stakeholders to participate in the process as they feel appropriate. Time frame. The committee shall recommend and report a course of actions to the town council by January 21st, 2013. Uh, that should be 14. Um, at which time the committee shall cease to exist unless otherwise extended by the town council. Resources available. The town manager will serve as support to this committee and all town departments will be made available as may be necessary for the committee to complete its task. Vacancies and removal. Any vacancy shall be filled by the town council. The town council may remove any member of the committee by vote of a majority of its members for misconduct or non-performance of duty. Officers, the committee shall elect a chair and recording secretary from among its members. The chair shall be counted to determine a quorum and shall have the same rights as other members of the committee, including the right to vote. Quorum and voting. A quorum shall consist of four members. The concurrence of the majority of the members present and voting shall be necessary to decide any question before the committee and meeting and records. The committee shall meet often enough to complete its responsibilities within the deadline set and shall strive to meet weekly on a date and time specified by a vote of the majority of the committee at its first organized meeting. Other meetings may be called by the chair, provided that the chair shall call a meeting of the committee upon the request of at least three members. The committee shall keep minutes of its meetings and submit them to the town clerk's office. Now I read this in the form of a motion. Is there a second? And discussion? Thoughts? Errors? Emissions? <coughs> changes? Go ahead. Yeah? I, I certainly think that uh, the town should appreciate how hard uh, Tom Hall worked on this. Uh, he, thank you. Uh, uh, he uh, uh, was tireless in, in the drafting and keeping us apprised of, of his thoughts and direction, and I just think that uh, he should be recognized for the really the exceptional job he did on this and on many of the other things. I think I also, coming to this very late, Jean Marie, and I coming to this very late, we've been uh, uh, given an awful lot of information, uh, and there, because there was so much information in the months leading up to uh, the vote in October. 
uh, this started back in July. So it was uh, uh, very interesting to uh, go through the exercise of getting up to speed. We as counselors really have a responsibility to understand all of the information uh, that uh, was there. And this was a, a very sizable one. Tom showed me his, uh, uh, his file for this. It was enormous, a tremendous amount of material. And I have spent a lot of time. I know Jean Marie has too. She's told me that uh, we've, we've worked very hard to get up to speed, and I think we are. And uh, I'm encouraged by that because I think I know a lot more now than I did before. I look forward to this, uh, this ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I c just to reiterate what Bill had said, again, I've done a lot of talking to people on all sides of the issue. Um, I'm feeling a little discouraged by hearing that people are approaching this from the get-go as, this isn't going to work. It's, it's too short a time. You know, we don't like the people on the committee, whatever, whatever. Um, I'm hopeful that we can at least start this process uh, with the understanding that we're trying to make this as fair and balanced as we can, uh, given all of the sides to this issue, um, not just the dog side, but the preservation of the plovers, people have concerns about dogs, whomever. Um, not everyone's going to be happy. I understand that. I know I've said this before. I used to be a high school teacher. Uh, I used to give dates for when papers were due. And inevitably, I would hear, I'll never get it done by that point. My request is, as an individual counselor, is that we at least get started, get working, try to work as hard as we can towards this January 21st uh, deadline, if we want to call it that. I, for one, would be very happy if the committee's been doing the hard work and comes back and said we need more time to give that some consideration. But we do need to have some goal to work for, because otherwise, if you don't have a goal, and it's like getting on the road in your car and driving without knowing where you're going. So we at least have to start the process and come up with some decisions. I am looking forward very much to what this committee can come up with for reasonable solutions <coughs> to what we should be doing to accommodate the people of Scarborough. My only real hang up with the majority of this, and I will, I do want to say that Tom, I mean, did an incredible job with turning this around as quickly as he did, and I know that how much thought he put into this um, was a, a lot of work. I'm still, I, I'm hung up on the date. Um, it's, a pro it's, a, it's a problem for me. Uh, I think we're asking for an enormous amount of information in a short amount of time. Um, you know, I said at the workshop that I was concerned that the perception from before was that we rushed things. Um, whether that was true or not, that was the perception that was out there. And I'm, I'm afraid that we're giving, even though I know that's not the case with what happened with this, that's what people are, are perceiving this as. And I, I struggle with that. It's hard. To, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go vote for this because of the January, for January 21st deadline. I think there needs to be more time. I understand that we're not asking for their entire report by the 21st. Um, it just fe it feels tight to me. I, when this report comes back and these recommendations come back, I want it thorough. I want it detailed. I want to know exactly what they want, what those recommendations are. I understand that we can give them more time after the January 21st deadline, but to me that's like it's another process, it's another step, and I just, I don't know if that's a necessary step. Um, and I do, I, I am going to follow that up and say it's distressing to me when people stand up at the podium and say, I heard that this counselor said this and this counselor said that, and this, if we said it, say it. Tell me, I said, if, I, if you think I said something, say it. Tell me. Because I could sit up here and say, I heard from, the, from a dog's group that, um, well, some pretty disparaging remarks about myself as a counselor. 
what good is that going to do at this point? It's not going to do any good. We're all trying to move forward. Um, I know there's hard feelings out there, but you have to give us some, you've got to give us a little bit here. You've got to give us something to work with, and we, all, both sides, we have to be able to do that, or this, is, this whole process is going to implode. Nobody is discounting that vote. That was an amazing vote. I've said that over and over again. I'm, I, that's my point. I, I think it's, I feel like it's, that, that deadline is too tight. Um, are you offering an amendment to yes, change the date? Yes, please. Do you want me to make that now? Uh, yeah. So go ahead. Uh, to the, what is our, Tody, do you know where our second council meeting is in February? Okay. Do we have that? I know the first one is the 8th. The 22nd. I'd ask the uh, council to consider moving the time frame of a report back to February 22nd, 2014. I will second. Thank you. Is there a discussion from the council on the amendment? It would move the, um, what we're talking about is it would move the timetable for um, the initial report from this ad hoc committee um, to our second meeting in February. Um, uh, Jim Marie? My only input into this is, and I'm not saying at this point, you know, dates or dates and whatever, um, but to just keep in mind that we've had over six months of hearings and discussions and input and whatever, at least on the issue with the settlement with USFS, USFWS um, regarding the plover protection. Um, I don't know if it makes, I mean, how much more that's going to be different are we going to hear if we extend an extra month? Unless, um, and through the chair, I'll ask if I could ask uh, Councillor St. Clair through the chair, unless um, your thinking, Councillor, is that uh, we'd be able to have the whole package, which includes the town-wide issues by that date. That was, that's just my question. Yeah, that would be my hope. And I also think it gets us through the holidays. I mean, I think we're asking for an enormous task. Mm -hmm. um, I. I wouldn't want to be tasked in that. I mean, basically, it gives them two weeks to really focus. Um, and I don't know if I was on that committee if I would be comfortable turning around something that quickly. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a big job, as as we saw by the vote. It's it was too big. It was too big for us as a council at that time. Mm -hmm. The people showed us that. So that that's my I I think. Yes, I would hope at that point, because we would be allowing them another month, that we would get everything packaged together. This is what our recommendations are. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Yeah, I'd like to just say something. Um, the way I look at it, a date is a date. We're setting in place a date that we'd like to have some feedback. Um, and we said piping plover protection is the initial portion of this. At the workshop, we kind of, kind of agreed as a council that we're going to try to break this down into two pieces. The first piece being the piping plover protection, and the second piece being, you know, dogs on and off leashes around town and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the way this is written didn't really come out and say that other than the fact that it does say the piping pole for protection is the first priority. We, we should be addressing that. So if we say that the time frame is for January 21st, 2014, for the pipe and pull over protection, I think that's kind of reasonable. Again, I've, I've got to agree with Jean Marie. Um, this thing has been beaten to death. That pipe, makes the, the plover issue has been beaten to death. Uh, and I don't know, I haven't heard any other 
solutions. Oh. Now, maybe there are out there. Maybe there are out there. But, uh, you know, uh, and I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to fight the government. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, and this time frame also says that it can get extended. I would expect, I would expect if the committee came back to the council, uh, the first meeting in, in uh, uh, January, whatever that is, when's the first meeting in January? Is it the 8th or the 15th? We don't have 15th? one. It's actually January 1st is the first Wednesday. So uh, I think you'll have a workshop on the 8th is, is what I'm hearing from the chair. Okay. Well, I'm sure that we're going to get some feedback right off the bat as to whether they feel it's going to be doable or not. And just because we're going to vote on this thing doesn't mean that, you know, all hell's going to break loose if we don't get a recommendation by January 21st. What we want to do is we want to get the thing fixed. So do we have another comment on, on the amendment? This is on the amendment. This committee uh, is a really stellar committee. These people are motivated. They are knowledgeable. Uh, uh, this process is going to move forward because everyone who's involved uh, has studied these issues uh, and as a consequence I expect the committee is going to be impressive in the speed with which it works and the level of the discussion in terms of uh, uh, ways to solve, particularly in the first instance with uh, uh, the, uh, the plover, the plover discussion. So I'm very confident that we're going to make a lot of progress uh, in uh, in great speed, and that there'll be a really engaging discussion, uh, and give and take of ideas, and a respectfulness within the committee uh, that will be appreciated by all concerned. And I would encourage people to come and watch because I think it's going to be impressive, and I'm looking forward to it. And I think we're going to we're going to do a good job on behalf of the town, which is our goal, the seven of us who are going to serve on this committee. Any other discussion on the amendment? Um, I'll add my two cents to my, my thoughts for this. Um, I certainly appreciate, and, and, and I'm going to wind up supporting Kate on this one, um, I think the little extra time is probably not a bad thing. It is the holidays. I appreciate that. It's the winter. It's bad weather season. There's lots of lovely snow that we've been getting and more forecasted. And, and I can see adding a few extra weeks for allowing for, for those things. Um, as far as the amendment, um, I guess that's where I'll stop my thoughts. I have some thoughts on the entire package itself, but at this moment we're just talking about the amendment. So. Um, all those in favor of amending the date to, I'm sorry, the 19th, the 19th? <laughs> February 19th, is that correct? I had 22nd, but that's fine. Shall we just leave it where it is, the second meeting? And no, I, I trust you, you looked at the calendar, I didn't, 19th. Uh, we're wherever the second meeting in February lands, lands okay. us um, as the due date. Um, all those in favor of the amendment? All those opposed? I vote it fails. <laughs> I vote it fails. So there you go. The date stays the same. So on to the um, resolution itself. Now we have any other comments on the resolution mm -hmm. from council? No. All right. Seeing none, I guess I will add my again two cents on the package here. Uh, Certainly, there there is a time frame which, which it's time sensitive, and and it's time sensitive in in a multitude of reasons. The first one being um, obviously fish and wildlife is waiting with bated breath for an answer, um, and and their cutoff on that is in April. Um, certainly, I am not suggesting one way or another how this committee forms its opinion. Um, I'm comfortable with the shorter time frame because the reality of it is what I'm expecting to come out of this committee is a pretty basic answer, which is 
we will or we will not do something with dogs, beaches, and plovers. And it could very easily be the answer of, we will do nothing. Everything will stand as it is, and therefore everybody leaves at the end of the day in January and says, we're doing nothing. Um, in the same token, I have full confidence that if the decision is to do something, whether whatever that may be, um, that they will come to us at that time and say, we will need X amount of time in order to achieve this work. Um, but I think as a council and due process, like everything, there will need to be, if the decision is to go forward with something for fish and wildlife, a timetable that needs to happen to allow for, um, there's, of course, first reading, public hearing, all these things. There's a timetable that things have to happen in. So um, it's short, but I think, again, I think Tom has done an a wonderful job about reaching out to some of the folks that have been quite vocal right along the way. Um, these are some great folks. Again, um, familiar names, obviously, Katie Foley, who's been um, a big advocate. Glennis Chabot, again, is a name that we've all heard many, many times. She was responsible for a lot of the public outreach and education and, and trying to get the word out um, down there in Higgins Beach. And, you know, um, of course, our council um, rep will be Bill Donovan. Um, so I, I'm quite confident that these are some good folks that, that will do the work and, and do diligence and, and come up with a reasonable answer for us. That being said, what is the pleasure of the council? All those in favor? And opposed? And there's a vote. So under, there's no old business. Under new business, it's order number 1399, which is to act on the request from the deputy tax collector for a waiver of foreclosure on the following properties. Four David Drive, map T003, lot 004. Nine David Drive, map T003, lot 009. And authorize the town manager to sign the necessary documentation. Well, wait just a minute. Not that I think there'll be tons of public comment on this one, but. Does anybody wish to speak on order number 13-99? And seeing none, is the, I guess um, before I ask for what you folks would like to do with this this evening, if you would mind just sure. touching base on what this is yes, about. Um, tax liens for taxes due for 2011 tax year are maturing and there will be a foreclosure occurring on the 20th of this month. In this instance, these are two mobile homes that exist uh, in Crystal Springs, uh, and they're frankly they're they're um, they're not assets; they'd be liabilities. So, uh, unless the council takes this action, automatic foreclosure will happen, and we'll be the proud owners uh, of these <laughs> units. And so, this is not uncommon for properties that, uh, frankly, don't serve any purpose and, and might even harm us. Um, I, we recommend that you actually waive the automatic foreclosure. All right, and pleasure of the council. Uh, I need a little bit further explanation on that. So we're waiving the foreclosure. Right, unless you take this action on it, foreclosure is automatic, and so the town will be owner Thank of you. these mobile home units. Right. Um, the real estate in this case, it's not the land in question, it's actually the structure that sits on the land, right. and we've determined... The owner of those structures owe us... Back. back taxes. Fairly small amounts, as you might expect. The value of many of these still owe us taxes? Yes, they do. They, they will. And they need to be satisfied before the property is transferred, and certainly interest accrues. But this stops the automatic foreclosure mm -hmm. from occurring in two days. And we'll continue to charge them tax? Certainly. Yeah. Gotcha. Do these mobile homes sit on uh, land leases? I, I don't know what the legal relationship is, but the, the, the owner of the mobile home doesn't own the land under them, yes. So, so we'd only acquire the trailer. The physical trailer. structure, yes. Have so. we done this before? Is this customary? Quite common. Um, For these I hate situations. It's said we, ha we typically have one or more of these every year, yes. 
Just learning. So do we have a, um, a motion? So moved. Second. And, all right. And all those in favor? Thank you. Order number 13-100 is act on the request to accept an 18-acre parcel located off U.S. Route 1, which is the balance of Map U44, Lot 77, and authorize the town manager to execute all documents related to this item. If you like, I can provide an introduction. Please do. Uh, the Jarvis family, who owned uh, essentially the, the back land on the corner of uh, Oak Hill and Black Point Road, um, Route 1 and, and Black Point Road, uh, there's been two recent developments, actually, they're underway as we speak. One further up Route 1 where the Starbucks and the bank is being built, and the other down Black Point Road where the assisted living facility is being built. Both those projects sat, uh, were previously on the Jarvis property. There's a remnant at the end of that development of 18 acres, kind of the backland. It's a uh, fairly high value forested uh, wetland, most of it. Uh, it really doesn't serve much of a development purpose. But for members of council who uh, were on last year and, and previously, some of the folks, there's condominiums down, uh, further down on Eastern Road that, that are very concerned about stormwater runoff and the like. This forested wetland uh, serves a valuable conservation purpose uh, and practical purpose as well. Uh, beyond that, um, there is the, the opportunity, should the town uh, accept this offer, to put some sort of pedestrian connection from Eastern Road up through this parcel that will connect opposite Hannaford Drive. And that's something that we've been looking at at the staff level and would be interested in exploring further. This would certainly afford us that opportunity because it would cross this very land. Uh, this offer has a, a couple of stipulations associated, one of which is uh, that we would assume um, the remaining half share of the current year real estate taxes. And that's four thousand two hundred four four thousand three hundred and twenty two dollars um, and then there's some other IRS related um, documents that they would look for us to sign for the, for their purposes so I just want to be clear that there's there's a couple of strings that are attached uh, the largest of which is for us to um, satisfy the current year half of the current year taxes if some of the land does uh, is up right on Route 1, right? Yes, there's about 725 feet of Route 1, essentially from the Sitco gas station heading north <coughs> to the new development area where the coffee shop and bank is. That entire frontage would be part of this yeah. parcel. So one of the stipulations is that we can't develop that, right? Or can we? As a practical matter, uh, again, because of its just um, makeup and it, uh, it's by and large wetland, there's a couple of uplands, but um, you can't develop them, you can't connect right. them, if you will, so effectively it is undevelopable. But again, I think it does serve a, a value, frankly, just keeping a stand of trees in Oak Hill is, is not a bad thing. Beyond that, there are at least two condominium projects that um, do have, do take the brunt of stormwater that works its way from Oak Hill <coughs> uh, down across. But part of the agreement is that we do not develop that. I'm not aware that the, no. the current owners are requiring that per se, but practically speaking, that would be true. It's not a deed restriction that the Jarvis family is imposing. We're, we're here tonight just to kind of give you the go-ahead to continue with this, right? Okay. So the, the property. This is not the final. Now, this would allow authorize me to finalize this deal. Well, the paperwork in here says there are other stipulations that haven't been defined. Right, but the motion that's before you is to authorize the town manager to execute any and all documents to affect this transaction. So he would review the stipulations before? And I, I, I was just corrected. Uh, the mm -hmm. fourth stipulation does require the creation of a conservation easement uh, permanently preserving the property in its natural state. So we can't develop it? No. Mm -hmm. Um, well, why don't we get a motion on the floor before we keep with the discussion, actually, because so I'm realizing that's backwards. So. Second. Okay. Um, discussion. Uh, Ed, what's your... The, uh, uh, You're not Tom Hall would yes. negotiate on our behalf uh, uh, any terms relative to the conservation easement. That looks like that 
that's an important provision because it makes reference to outdoor and recreational uses and the terms by which those would be allowed and obviously that's part of our interest in owning the property. And that, that um, proviso certainly speaks to our conversations we've had with them in terms of connecting a pedestrian path through that mm -hmm. property. So though it can't be developed, it can support some level of uh, low level of recreation and outdoor uses. Anybody else? All right. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Order number uh, 13101 is act on the appointments to the PACS Policy Committee. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, so we have um, a motion. So moved. I'd like to make a motion. Second. And discussion? Second. Remember? No discussion. All right. Well, uh, just thank you for volunteering. <laughs> so, um, certainly, I, I think it's great. Um, we have Councillor, um, both Katarina and Donovan, that have volunteered to serve on PACs as our representatives. Um, certainly is an important piece. It's that regional part of, of you know, we're all caught and we kind of need somebody there to keep things moving. So, um, and I'm glad to hear that you two stepped up to the plate. Um, certainly, it's also one of those unique committees where you really do, you know, it's beneficial to have somebody that can kind of follow it year to year rather than having um, turnover because it's a lot to come up to speed on. Um, so again, thank you very much. And all those in favor? All right, it's a vote. Um, Non-action items, there are none. And standing and special committee reports. We'll start with um, Kate. I don't have any actually tonight. We start. Most of my stuff isn't starting up until mm. after the new year. Um, I attended the Setco Board of Directors meeting on Thursday, December fifth. And they elected new officers for the coming year. Uh, Kevin Freeman is going to be the chair. Andrea Killiard is the vice chair. Bill Austin is the treasurer. And Rick Chenet is going to be the clerk. Um, also at that meeting, um, Jim Demikis, who whose term is expired on the board of SEDCO, gave a presentation that he gave to the Maine Mayor's Coalition in November. And the subject was recent trends and future of economic developments. Uh, it's an ex Jim, by the way, is a consultant, uh, an economic development consultant. Uh, works all over the country. Very, very uh, knowledgeable. He gave this presentation and it is an excellent presentation. And I would really like to see the presentation given to uh, the town council and the board of education combined, uh, primarily because there's a lot in there about education. How do we go about educating our children to meet the economic development needs of the state and the area? Uh, so I'm going to. I'm going to uh, talk to uh, Richard about this and hopefully set something up. That's all I got. Jim? Um, Coastal Waters and Harbor and the Shellfish Conservation Commission met. Uh, they were discussing licenses for the fishermen and the numbers that they need to make it work. Um, they were also glad to see that the dredging was going to be taking place as of the moment. Um, they are just talking about keeping keeping the whole area down there clean <coughs> and part of, part of having a license. You've got to do so many hours 
of community service, which is basically picking up and taking care of Pine Point, uh, the waters, as well as the parking lot. There are cameras down there, which a lot of people don't know. And they take in an awful lot, and that's how they catch people when they're trying to steal. Because that's awfully expensive, what they have down there. And other than miscellaneous things, that was about the brunt of the two meetings. And that's all I have to say. On. And I... <coughs> that you folks have anything yet, but um, go ahead. I do. Know. Yes, Conservation Commission. Ah. <laughs> Met Monday uh, night, and the topic of the uh, conversation was marsh migration. My, I can't even talk tonight. Marsh migration um, with the uh, um, upcoming rise in uh, sea levels expected over the next 50 to 100 years. We invited members of the Scarborough Land Trust, some state of Maine agencies, Maine Coast Heritage Trust, um, to come to a presentation because we're going to begin the process of working hopefully with a long-term planning committee on the council uh, to look at what are the potential effects particularly on infrastructure here in the town um, as, as the years go on and it's best to start planning ahead so that's what we've been working on. Also uh, we do have an opening on the Conservation Commission and we're looking for someone to join so please talk to Tody if you're interested. I have not yet had a uh, <laughs> subcommittee to report on. I have the pleasure of being on the Energy Committee, which meets tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. Thomas Hall and I will be present, <laughs> hopefully on time. Uh, so um, I'm looking forward to that. I wanted to be on the Energy Committee because uh, I just think that's a huge issue for our country's future, as well as our community's future. Uh, I put photovoltaic uh, uh, panels on my house uh, down at Higgins Beach and I'm building a new house around the corner and I'm putting them on those two. They're a lot of fun. If anyone's ever uh, interested in knowing more about that, I enjoy talking about it. Uh, I wrote an article for the Higgins Beach Times or uh, whatever we call it <laughs> down there. I've forgotten uh, about it. So uh, to try and get people to understand uh, more about uh, 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 PV panels. So I'm go I've got that. Uh, as far as coming events, uh, uh, we've started to be looking at the fact that the 2015 budget for the state mm. is $40 million shy of being balanced and by constitutional requirement it has to be balanced. So uh, this is of great concern to our council. This is a huge issue. Uh, uh, we, th their recourse of not balancing that budget is to uh, take all $40 million out of the monies that they send back to the towns and have historically, and that's a commitment, that's a pact, that's a, uh, something that the towns uh, uh, have expected and it's been stable and now it's diminishing. Uh, last year's budget suffered terribly from that uh, and now the 2015 budget may as well. This is something the townspeople of Scarborough and other communities in uh, southern Maine should really be interested in. Uh, so uh, Jean Marie, who's very knowledgeable about uh, uh, legislative process, has offered to try to work to set up something with the legislative delegation mm -hmm. so that our feelings on this that we, we, we be proactive about it. I think the council feels pretty, pretty strongly that this is, this is an appropriate thing for the council to do, to uh, try and be the voice of the town, uh, uh, the community. And so uh, I think we're going to probably see some activity on that in the near future. Very shortly. Yes. All right. Um, I have appointments committee met this evening. Um, we have some names to post. Um, we have... Um, William Frothingham for the Board of Assessment Review. For Coastal Waters and Harbor Advisory Committee, we have Chris Rule. For Community Services and Recreation Advisory Board, we have Art Dillon. 
For Conservation Commission, we have Chris Herrick and Peter Slavinsky, as well as Sean Flaherty. We have for the Energy Committee, Sandy Dar no. Dargy. Dargy, thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> uh, for Historic Preservation, um, this is just a typographical error to, to fix. Uh, moving Becky Delaware and Craig Frederick to full voting members. Um, Housing Alliance, there would be, again, Craig Frederick and Brian Shumway for reappointment. Parks and Conservation Land Board, move um, Sue Foley Ferguson and Douglas Williams. And Sean Flaherty as a full voting member. And Pest Management Advisory Committee, Terry Eddy. Planning Board would be Ronald Mazur and Nicholas McGee, as well as um, Susan Auglis and John DuPont. Senior Program Advisory Board is Brian Young. Transportation Ad Hoc Committee is Judy Roy as um, the Long Range Planning Representative. And as far as the openings, we have many, many, many openings here in Scarborough on many of our committees. Um, it's a great way to serve your community and um, also help and help inform those decisions. Um, we have Board of Assessment Review, Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee, Conservation Commission, Historic Preservation, Housing Alliance, Parks and Conservation, Personal Appeals Board, Pest Management Advisory Committee, Senior Program Advisory Board, and I thought there was one more, but I may have forgotten it at the moment. Um, at any rate, we post those names. So, Town Manager Report. Yes. A couple quick things. We continue to work on the theme of flood maps, or with them, I should say. Uh, we find ourselves kind of awkwardly being the uh, educational and informational resource. Uh, these, this is a process and a product that we did not create, and mm -hmm. we're not frankly getting much support from uh, FEMA who, who did create them. So that's a source of some frustration to us. Uh, uh, by bits and pieces, there are some elements uh, starting to be better known in terms of process from here. Uh, I believe there'll be a meeting on January 8th. They're saying that it's really for community officials and we're really insisting that they need to have a more open public process because without that, it's left to the local um, responsibility to help under, help the residents understand. Um, I'm confident we'll be successful in getting them to broaden that process a bit. Uh, we also have produced some new maps and have a better sense of what the effect, uh, potential effect of these new maps are. And in rough numbers, about 450 pr properties for the first time are now included in the flood zone, and we can certainly work with homeowners and show them that. Uh, interestingly, about 89 have come out of the flood zone as this technology and the computer modeling has been perfected. Uh, some properties have actually been removed from the flood, flood zone, but far less than have been added. And there's about 480 structures uh, that are affected um, with these new properties as well. So certainly keep paying attention. We're working as hard as we can. Uh, congressional staff uh, and delegation is assisting us in getting better reaction from FEMA. Um, it also occurred to me when uh, Councilor Donovan mentioned the Energy Committee, the town is doing a demonstration for three or four days this week with a Nissan LEAF, which is a full electric vehicle. Uh, this is a program sponsored through the local councils of governments. Uh, they have this vehicle for, I think, a two-year lease, and they're encouraging all member communities to take it. And um, I think we've had code office, public works, community services have all taken it for an afternoon and are test driving it. So it's kind of an interesting thing. I'll report on that in, in better fashion uh, in the morning. Also, just to report on the property tax assistance program, this is the program the town sponsors. It kind of rides on the coattails of the state circuit breaker program. This is for um, Scarborough residents 62 years or older and having lived here for at least 10 years. This year, we were able to assist 267 senior residents. Interestingly, that was 43 less than last year for reasons I can't quite explain. Um, the good news is there's adequate budget, and so all received the maximum they were eligible for up to a maximum of uh, $500.
So those checks have gone out. Many people should have received those already. If you've applied and were expecting a check and didn't get it, by all means, give us a call. Uh, it was mentioned earlier on the dredge. There was a pre-construction meeting this week. Uh, the bid has been awarded to a Maryland firm. Nalco is their name. Uh, mobilization, meaning they'll bring all their equipment up um, December 29th, just right away. And dredging will start January 5th. They fully expect to need all the time given, and their requirement is to complete their work by April 1st. If that date sounds familiar, uh, it should. Uh, it's much the same issue that uh, we've been dealing with here. Uh, the dredge, just in, in quick fashion, uh, will be to full depth, and that's to the congressionally designated uh, navigation channel. There will be eight foot depth, depth in the channel and six foot depth in the anchorage area. Uh, we have talked to the contractor about the potential for additional work while they're here. There's um, three or four moorings just off Ferry Beach that at low tide are actually landlocked. They cannot leave their mooring. Uh, there, I think we're going to have some challenges. It looks as though we need separate permitting to do that additional work, though it's fairly minor. Uh, but nonetheless, I've asked for a cost estimate, and I'll report when I know more. And lastly, the project will need to coordinate work that will occur really at the same time on Prestonet Country Club property. Uh, there has been sig significant erosion to the point that they have uh, sandbagged a good portion of Western Beach, and this work uh, the, the spoils from the dredge project will be deposited on Western Beach, and so their work for erosion control will occur at the same time. So there'll be a piece of coordination and a lot of activity you'll see starting early, er, early in January. And lastly, though I can't confirm it, I'll just mention I've been working with uh, Councillor Sullivan or Chairman Sullivan regarding the first meeting in January. Uh, the first m Wednesday in January is actually the first of the, of the year. I can't imagine anyone wants to meet on January 1st. And so we've looked at scheduling a workshop for the following Wednesday on the 8th. And right now the plan is to do this at down at the main veterans home as part of our outreach effort. And the workshop would have two components. One would be the meeting with the legislative delegation, if we can arrange it. And the second would be for the council to go through its annual goal setting process. So more to follow, but I just wanted to kind of get that out. Uh, it's not confirmed yet, but please put it on your calendar, and we'll confirm as soon as we can. Thank you. I'm available for questions if you have any. All right. I, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, um, the property tax assistance program, it's my understanding that with the uh, demise of the circuit breaker, that that's kind of gone by the wayside at the moment. Yeah, in fact, the, circuit, the, the state circuit breaker program uh, invalidates any local program. So uh, the current year for which we just paid out, we were still okay. I'm told there are one or more fix-up legislation pieces uh, in this next session that will reinstate that piece. And my advice, uh, I've talked to Councilor St. Clair about the ordinance committee and prepping for when that occurs, we may need to do some modification to our local ordinance. Okay. So we need to wait for the state. Okay, so that's something to add then to yeah. what we're going to talk to the legislative delegation about. Great idea. Yeah. Good. All right, council, uh, council member comments. We'll start down with you. Yeah. I think I've made I've made them all. <laughs> Except I do wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, just a couple of things. Um, I'm very happy to see the ad hoc committee formed. I. It really struck me uh, when one of the people who was making comments, and I love listening to the uh, citizen comments during the comment period, I think it's important, um, was the fact that we need to have a two-way dialogue, two-way uh, discussions. Um, I know that in my business that's extremely important, and I'm, I'm very hopeful we will have that process occur in this committee. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing the results of the committee and working um, forward from there. Um, uh, again, as, as Bill mentioned and Tom mentioned, we are planning to meet with a legislative delegation. We're going to have a huge issue this year unless we start pushing back, if you want to call it that, on uh, the state. They've already started uh, blowing their trumpets 
up there in Augusta saying that um, revenue sharing is welfare and whatever. Um, and we need to let it be known that uh, we're really tired of uh, our higher taxes uh, on, on the local level. They're regressive and we need to be uh, working to uh, restore our revenue sharing and uh, state aid for schools. And then last but not least, I'd like to say happy holidays to everybody. Um, and please remember your neighbors who might not have people to celebrate with or those for whom the holidays are very difficult due to their personal situations. Um, I would hope you would keep them all in mind and uh, enjoy this time with your family. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just want to say that I'm looking forward to the uh, ad hoc committee. We probably should have had it a long time ago, but now we have it. Um, and I think it's going to come up with some good ideas, fresh ideas for us to take a look at. And I'm looking forward to seeing the results of it. And also, I just want to wish everybody a happy holidays, happy new year. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, one thing that I was going to bring up earlier, but I didn't want to start a fiasco, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one that read about it in the newspaper, but uh, somewhere around here is challenging the uh, fish and wildlife with what they're trying to do, and I, I believe it went to court, something in Portland, that it went to court, and the, ju the judge would not uphold what the Fish and Wildlife said. Did you see the article? As, as I like that. Is it a last week? I almost fell off my chair when I read it. Uh, could end up having some good to do with the ad hoc committee, and in turn the town, which I look forward to seeing. Um, that's one. Number two, hunting is over legally, so you don't have to be as careful with your orange vests. But there's still a lot of people that think they have the right to hunt, although they don't. The deer. Uh, wish everyone a happy holiday and off to a positive thinking new year. Thank you. All right, so um, I have to boast a little bit about hunting season because Hubby got a 210 pound, 10 point buck, so he's proud as punch. Um, yes, it is the close of deer season, but um, and congratulations to those that got something, and better luck next year for those that didn't. And um, so I guess I, I'll chime in again. I I'm per I do like the ad hoc committee. I guess that's you know, obviously the kind of the biggest thing from this meeting tonight. Um, again, I, I do like, you know, reading the names. I like seeing that those people step forward and offered and, and, you know, certainly have given up personal time, you know, with their families and whatnot to trudge through this. Um, I expect um, to hear good things either way uh, out, of, out of it. Um, other than that, I would like to wish everybody a wonderful and Merry Christmas and a very happy new year. Don't forget your designated drivers and have a wonderful night. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Second. All those in favor?